back to Creation Magazine Live. So what are we going to be talking about in this segment? Well, this is an article called uh, Dino, Dino Protein Denial. And this is by David Catchapool, a former atheist who's uh, one of the scientists on staff with our Australian office. And this is from the 32-2 edition of Creation Magazine, this one with the parrot on the front. We'll have to do that article at, at some point on parrots there. Lots of content in, in Creation Magazine. Now, this article, we've, we've been, there have been all kinds of discoveries through the years, as, of course, we, we, we both know this, and anyone who's been to creation.com, if you followed this over the years as far back as, what was it, 90, 91? Maybe something I shouldn't like say. Yeah. Something like that. There was the early 90s, in any case. Maybe it was 90, actual 1990. Yeah. Um, it was Dr. Mary Schweitzer. Again, she's, she's been known for this kind of thing. Finding, uh, it was blood cells back in the, in the 90s, whenever it was. Which was a bombshell. It was It, it was, was far crazy. as the evolutionary period. Yes. Yeah. Uh, blood cells in a T-Rex leg bone. Right. And then there have been more discoveries since then. Now, this is kind of the latest update. And this is, uh, this is actually from 2010. You got the, the, uh, this is where the story's at uh, nowadays. Right. Discoveries of soft tissue and protein in dinosaur remains are unacceptable to many scientists. Well, if you believe in that they died millions of years ago, yeah, of course it's unacceptable. That's because if dinosaurs have been extinct for 65 million years, as evolutionary dogma teaches, then cells and even proteins should have decayed long ago. This preconception can radically affect how researchers view the evidence. For example, recent electron microscopy and X-ray imaging of a well-preserved hadrosaur, that's a duck-billed dinosaur fossil, unearthed in North Dakota, revealed that there revealed what was described as cell-like structures comparable to those of living creatures. So you're pulling out, like this, it, again, cell-like structures, and that's a quote, right. uh, comparable to living creatures, all right, out of a 65 million year old uh, hadrosaur I think bone. that one was supposed to be 80 million it's years it, old, actually, but anyway. It's 80 million years, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, the hadrosaur was 80 million years, yeah. that's right. Uh, note that the University of Manchester researchers Phil Manning and Roy Woglius were unwilling at that stage to call them cells. But subsequent analysis of the hadrosaur skin and a claw found amino acids, these are constituents of proteins, suggesting the cell-like structure were indeed cells. They look like cells, they smell like cells, and they're, they're cells. Turned out to be cells. Um, turned out to be cells. The blatant evolutionary bias of the researchers is highlighted by their reaction to the findings as reported by New Scientist. And here's a quote from New Scientist. Manning says the presence of amino acids rather than whole proteins is a good sign. After 66 million years, proteins in soft tissue should have broken down into amino acids, so finding large proteins would likely be a sign of contamination. The high concentrations of amino acids in the fossil compared with only traces found in the surrounding sediment support the idea that they came from the fossil." End quote. In other words, if intact proteins had been found in the hadrosaur fossil, the researchers would have denied the result, instead dismissing it as contamination. <laughs> Such is the sacrosanct view of millions of years time frame. The researchers would, ra would rather question their own analysis than the supposed age of the fossil. Right. The age of the fossil is absolute. That's not... It's not up it, for discussion. Really. No, not up for discussion. This is not the first time that evolutionists have taken such a stance. Evolutionary paleontologist Hans Larsen has actually called for C14 testing. Now, C14 dating should be done, That he said that it should be done, of the still soft and stretchy T-Rex samples reported by fellow paleontologist Mary Schweitzer. And she's... Uh, become synonymous with yeah. this uh, finding soft tissue and but so on. But not for the reason most people would think. No, not for dating. Here's how the article continues. Note that this was not done, that this is not because he wants to date the dinosaur remains, but in order to determine whether they have been con contaminated by modern microbes. That is, the presence of C14 cannot be from a 70 million year old T-Rex. Yeah, because most people, well, many people wouldn't understand that C14 dating doesn't give you the millions of years uh, kind of dates that w are commonly thrown around. C C14 dating may be up to 100,000 years. Uh, right, maybe. it's too unstable, it's too radioactive, it never gets to the millions of years. Right. So there's other dating methods that evolutionists use right. to, to try to get there. 
and I find out where I was. Uh, yeah. However, uh, okay, so that's, the, the, in other words, the presence of C14 cannot be from the 70 million year old T-Rex, Larson would reason, because C14 cannot last that long, as the article says. Right. Therefore, the C14 is from recent contamination. Now, there's a, there's a twist here. However, contamination can't explain the widespread C14 in diamonds. Right. There have been articles in, in other issues of the magazine of C14 found in diamonds. Which are supposedly millions of years old, and they're incredibly hard, so how could you contaminate them? Can't be contaminated, but uh, there's C14 in them, which is right. amazing. So, so they can't be the millions of years or the billions of years old that the evolutionists claim. The evidence of intact proteins and soft tissue being found in dinosaur remains continues to mount, right in line with the Bible's time frame of history. The dinosaur fossils date back more, no more than a few thousand years at most, not millions of years. Right. So that's a very yeah. revealing article because it it it, it kind of unlocks a lot of things here. Number, number one, I remember when Schweitzer, in 2005, when she found the, the Tyrannosaur femur, and, and she said soft and stretchy material in there, unfossilized. And, uh, and blood vessels, she said you could squeeze the contents out yeah. of the blood vessel. And, 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 and there was an evolutionist who, who said to her, I, I remember reading, I don't care what you think you found, it's not what you think you found. That, that was the statement, and she was like, well, what do, you, what do you want to do? That this is what I'm looking at yes. through my microscope here. You can you can see it. There's actually a, an amazing video uh, online. You can see where where there's a pair of tweezers and it's grabbing the soft tissue and it's pulling it and it's it's, it's flexible. Like and, a little rubber band. It's all stretchy. And, yeah, yeah, and this is from a creature supposedly 70 million years old. But so dogmatic is the concept of millions of years that that was a statement. I don't care what you think you found. It's not what you think you found. So what you're observing is overridden by my belief in millions of years. Yes. That, that's the way that works. It, it can't be that. That was one of the referees of a paper that she was trying to have published. And, uh, yeah. and, and so she, you, you send out these papers to these referees and they, they come back with comments. And yeah. the comment was, well, I don't, I don't believe you're, 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 you've done sloppy science, is what he was saying, right. really. You're, you're not finding soft, t soft tissue right. inside dinosaur bones. Now, that's impossible. Now, look at the way this dating works, right? Okay, so they believe that, that the creatures are 70, 80 million years old. But we're going to apply carbon dating to it. He wants to apply to carbon date it, this fellow here, so that if we find any, we'll prove, because carbon dating only works up to 100,000 years. He wouldn't say, oh, well, because if they did find carbon, then the dinosaur must be, you know, whatever it was within that 100. He wouldn't say, no, the dinosaur must be 70,000 years old to fall in the carbon dating. He would then use that as proof that it's been contaminated. It's contaminated, yeah. So, you can't win. I mean, the, <laughs> I hear from people all the time, yeah, well, you creationists, you don't accept the dating methods. Well, there's good reason for that because <laughs> he's giving an example here again where you just cherry pick your data. This is the dogmatic stance. Millions of years has occurred. Dinosaurs lived in this age range, and it wouldn't matter what the evidence shows. You're just going to pigeonhole it and, oh, yeah, soft tissues, we can find that in 70 million year old creatures. It just right. happened somehow, or else it's been contaminated, or. It, it's so malleable, this theory of evolution. Um, yeah, amazing. and in, in some senses, it's almost easier to be an evolutionist than a biblical creationist. I right. mean, we have a very, very uh, well-defined history. Timeline. There are dates there. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what happens when you pull the dates out of a story. You, if, if, if you don't have dates in, on the events in the story, it becomes once upon a time. That's right. right? That's... Th that, that's what you have. If you want more information about uh, some of the amazing discoveries they've found in dinosaurs, visit creation.com.